G'day all and welcome back to my scintillating summer of Sony. Today we're going to be working on the TCK55, finally. We first looked at this around January-ish, I think, in which we found that uh, there was an issue with the uh, fast wind reel drive in there. Something to do with the clutch. It's not moving back and forth properly. But uh, I'm betting there's other issues that will have to be addressed on this unit, so we're going to do that today. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to mention once more that uh, not all of the transport service will be on video for this one. This is because the TCK61 uses the same transport, and I've already shot all that footage. So if you need to know how to exactly service this transport, go back and watch that video. It'll all be in there. And, uh, well, except for the uh, head block coming off. I didn't do that on that unit. We'll do that in this in this video. So yeah, we're gonna finally get this going today. It's the nicest of my Sony Silver units, except for maybe my grandparents' TCK45. In my uh, first TCK666 video, the other two units I'm servicing in the, in the part of this series... Man, my brain is out today. I can't talk. Can't talk real good. Yeah, the TCK65 and 75 are both really rough. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to do for either one of those, but we'll see what happens. I have high hopes, but low expectations, if that makes any sense. But, uh, yeah. Today is for this one, but uh, before we get to do that, I have to show you something. It's going to be show and tell time here at my channel. This just came in, and I bought this because of the Sony TCK 666ES. This, I thought, was absolutely mandatory in order to get that uh, unit serviced properly. This is a torque cassette. What this does is it measures the take-up and uh, back tension torque of the transport. And you have to be careful when you buy one of these, because there are numerous ones for different purposes. Like you can see on this one, on the supply reel, I've got a uh, torque scale going from 0 to 10 grams per centimeter. And on the take-up side, I've got 0 to 100 grams per centimeter. That's because this is the absolute correct tape to use for uh, what I tend to uh, need it for most, which is servicing uh, unidirectional uh, transports like this. If you wanted to do an auto-reverse tape deck, you would need something different than this. This is a TW2111A, and there are different types of these tapes for uh, for different purposes. Like an auto-reverse tape would have 0 to 100 on both sides, not just 0 to 10 on this side, and you can get fast wind uh, torque cassettes as well to go up to something like 300, but uh, yeah. I'm more consist or more concerned with uh, the back tension torque being proper on these things, and that's why I've got this one. For the most part, you're going to want 0 to 10 on the back tension side of it in order to uh, accurately measure, because uh, most of these tape decks will be somewhere between 0 and 10. And then over on this side, they'll be somewhere between 0 and 100. So uh, I thought we'd try this out for the first time on this machine here. And uh, we'll see what happens. I don't intend to use it on every single cassette deck I service because uh, I'm worried about this being destroyed because it cost me like 225 bucks. So, uh, yeah, this only comes out when I'm absolutely sure a uh, tape deck is already working properly. It's just so I can confirm. And, yeah, I don't know if I'll be using it for most of these uh, Sony summer units. I will probably use it for the... For the K75, it's probably going to be essential for that one. But the 65, I might just see what happens and just try to get by without it. But uh, I want to show you exactly how that works, but we'll do that in a second here. We need to see whether or not this unit is still acting the way it was during the evaluation. So, uh, well, it's not even going into play mode today. Well, there it goes. It's having a little bit of trouble going into play, but now it's doing it. 
Now I should mention I have already cleaned the heads off camera and the cat stand. They were absolutely grotesquely filthy. I've never seen anything quite like it. Even the uh, Nakamichi 480 wasn't quite that bad. So, uh, yeah. Still getting delayed or even no engagement of the reels during fast wind. So, uh, yeah, I want to see exactly what this torque tape does and show you what this torque tape does. So we're going to use it on this machine real quick here. And you'll get to see exactly how this was running. First time I've ever been able to do this, so I'm kind of excited. So let me see here. Let me hit play and then we'll see what we get. Okay, we've got roughly 9.8, maybe 10 on the back tension and... Uh, what is that? 10 on the take-up tension? That can't be right. That is not what this should be running at. Yeah, it's got 15 grams per centimeter on the uh, take-up side. That should be at least 23, I think, if I remember the service manual right. And there's a range of 23 or something like that to 43. And this thing's doing 15. So that means we definitely have an issue with the uh, the uh, idler tire, or the, yeah, probably the idler tire, but possibly also the clutch in there. So I will be doing the clutch service on camera and idler service on camera, possibly. But uh, yeah, the other thing about these torque tapes is is I don't want to uh, rewind this in a deck. I want to do it manually because uh, there's no leader on this tape. I'm really concerned about this snapping, so, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, this thing is clearly running out of spec. I think the uh, back tension side is supposed to be 4.3 grams per centimeter and not the uh, 9.8 we got, and, uh, yeah, clearly the take-up tension isn't there, so. Yeah, we gotta get started on this. So, uh, let me just set you up here. And the very first thing I want to do is pull this beauty plate off the back so I can see just what's going on in there with that uh, reel drive. Okay, let's see what we got going on in here. Oh yeah, the idler is clearly shot. Maybe the clutch is also shot. We'll tackle that by and by. But first I gotta get this thing apart and then we can uh, start in on the head block, I guess. That's the one thing I didn't show about the TCK61, and I want to do that first, I think. Okay, so before I continue on with uh, getting this transport out, I thought I was going to be able to sneak it out without having to deal with the uh, front panel, but no. It's just like the TCK61. You do have to remove the front panel, or at least loosen it. So uh, I thought I would let you know what you have to do to do that. First, got to take the uh, the decorative faceplate off, which is three screws up top and three screws underneath, then it just lifts out. You do, of course, need a two millimeter Allen wrench for this. At least I think it's a two millimeter. And then once you get that out, you've got two screws over here, two screws here, and you got to take this nut out yet. I haven't done that yet, but uh, you do have to remove that in order to uh, move this whole panel away, I think. I don't know if you've got to do something with this yet, too, but I'll find out the hard way, I guess. And then you've got to take off the three front screws that hold the bottom access cover on, and then you can get this uh, 
moved out of the way, I think. It's already probably loose enough for me to get the transport out from here, so uh, maybe I don't have to mess with that nut. Okay, so getting the door off on this thing is going to be a little bit of a nightmare. There's one screw down in here after you get the uh, the uh, gray part of the door off. The plastic part, this thing. And then uh, there's one spring down in there to, to watch out for. This one right here. And then uh, freeing up this arm that goes to the back on the damper here. I'm going to try to do this without fighting with this little clip here, because that clip's going to be a pain. I just know it. But uh, we'll see what happens here. I'm going to free up that spring first. Like so. And maybe there's a way we can work this, uh, this arm out from the damper here. Without dealing with that clip. Maybe there isn't. Probably there isn't. I'm looking for a good angle and I'm not finding one. So I guess we are going to have to deal with that. All right, clip is off. And the damper arm is off. I'll just set those off to the side there. And now the door mechanism is off and we can get access to the front. Now, first things first, what I want to do is I want to look at the idler, this thing over here and this uh, tire over here, the take up idler. Absolutely hard as a rock. Surprise, surprise, surprise. How's this belt? Actually, not bad. We can keep that. And if I remember right, all of the belts are new on this thing, so I may not have to change anything about the belts. So, I can't remember how I did this before. Did I take this off separate? It doesn't look like it comes off separate. I think i got to take the real table off in order to get access to this. But uh, before that, there's something else we ought to check. And that is this thing. And look at that, this one is cracked. That will have to be repaired. This is the danger you get into with these older Sony units. See that crack right there? That's no bueno. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do much about that. Anyway, that doesn't involve breaking the other side off. I don't know if JB Weld will work. I may try it, I may not. Super glue may work. But uh, yeah, that's going to have to be dealt with at some juncture. It's in the process of failing now. It hasn't completely failed yet. I could get the transport out of the TCK61 and just swap that in and not deal with anything else in here. But I don't know. I'd kind of like to try and fix this first. So yeah, we got stuff to do in here for sure. The reason I don't really want to cannibalize the TCK61 for the entire transport just now is because I might need to do that for the 75 or the 65. I would like to try and find a way to fix this first. Okay, I think I got the uh, the uh, take up supply or the 
the uh, take up reel table and the idler done. Here's the old idler right here. It's no good. It's completely dried out. So in the garbage it goes. I've got some fresh molly coat in there as well. And it's real grippy now. Like I can't tell you how grippy it is. Anyway, I did scuff the outside just a little bit of the new idler briefly just to make sure that uh, it was going to be not glazed or anything. And it's fine. And I just want to reiterate, you get these idlers from uh, Silicone Mind on eBay. It's the only source in the world to get them from. And uh, I've got two more on the way right now for the 65 and 75. I'm not sure if they'll get here in time. But uh, if, if they don't, on the 65, when I do that service, I'll use the idler from the 61. Because that's got a new one in it. So, uh, yeah. But I just want to reiterate... There is a very tiny washer holding this, these uh, reel tables on, and it's not a split washer, so uh, be very, very, very careful when you take those off, otherwise you will lose them. And in order to reinstall them, what I like to do is I like to use the tip of a pen. I just take the, the uh, tip off here, and I just use this to press down the washer like so, and that gets it seated. So... That's basically done now. I haven't done the uh, supply reel table yet, but I will. Because I might as well. After I've done the, the one, I might as well do the other. But uh, yeah. I think I might have to actually get at the, uh, this assembly from the back. I'm not exactly sure how this works or how it's assembled. But uh, yeah, clearly the clutch isn't doing well. Actually, maybe I can access it from here. So how about we do that real quick? I'll just put the uh, the remains of the reel table back together first so I don't lose anything. I hope I put that back on the right way. I think I did. Yes, I did. Anyhow, let's take a look at this clutch here. I have a feeling it's the clutch under this uh, idler that we're most interested in looking at right now. Let's see if I can find a way to do this without destroying the uh, spring as well. Split washers would be very helpful in this uh, in this instance, but uh, Sony doesn't believe in putting them in the, these decks apparently. Or didn't, I should say. It's not like they're still being made. Let's see if I can get it off with my fingernails. And I got it. It's not the easiest thing to do, but I got it. Let's have a look at what we got going on in here. Never see that spring again. Well, maybe I will. Yeah, it was there, right on my pants again. I'm glad I found it. Okay, let's look at this idler. Clutch. That actually does feel a little degraded. I wonder if I could scuff that up with sandpaper and bring it around. Or if I would have to actually replace the felt on this thing. Because I believe this is the problem. This is why it won't uh, go back and forth properly. It, it's very smooth. Let me try some sandpaper first and I'll see if, what that does for it. I'm just lightly brushing it. That may work, that may not work. I may end up having to get into the uh, 61 in order to get that clutch out. See, the problem with replacing this is I don't know what to replace it with. We've got no fabric stores anywhere around here to buy felt from. I did get some from Walmart. I suppose that could be an option. I suppose the only thing to really do is to try it the way it is and see if we can uh, 
get it to behave. I will uh, throw some molly coat into the center there just to make sure that uh, that the shaft is lubricated because that could be part of the problem. I just wanted to show you real quick. This is all I could find for in, in the way of felt around here. So I'm kind of debating actually giving this a shot, but uh, I don't know. I can always find out the hard way that uh, scuffing it up didn't work and uh, I have to get back in here anyway, at which point I'd probably just go get the clutch from the uh, 61, but I will try to work with it this way first, I guess. And as usual, we do not want any grease anywhere on the felt, so I've just basically got a really light coating in there, or a really light covering in there. And then we're going to push it through the, uh, the hole with the shaft it rides on. I'm just making sure I get all the uh, grease away from the felt. So that may work, that may not work. We'll find out. And the pen trick will work on here too, so we'll do that in real time with you. Unless, of course, that happens. And by that, I mean the whole shaft pushes through. So I have to get this whole assembly out now. I can't just service it like this anymore. Now, how do I do that, you ask? Good question, I answer. The shaft comes through down in there. I don't know if you can see it. It's really hard to see. It's right down there. In fact, I'm just going to push it back through with a dental pick. Maybe I should just try and pull that off. What do you say? Not exactly sure how it comes off. We've got these three tabs here, and they line up with three slots, but uh, there's currently no way to uh, rotate this over far enough to uh, get those slots and pins to line up because of all the stuff that's going on on the back side. All right, now we can see the shaft that uh, is giving us our problems. It's this one right here. And it's because of these brakes that uh, we can't exactly remove the whole assembly. I'm kind of thinking maybe I do want to remove the whole assembly. So why don't we take the brakes off? I'll zoom you in here so you can see better. Maybe, if we can get this wiring out of the way too. So yeah, if I, oh, that's even cracked. That retainer that holds that pin in is cracked. Wonderful. So yeah, I guess we're gonna have to take this screw out. To pull the brakes off. And now we should be able to go to the other side. And possibly remove this whole assembly. Okay, it's being retained in by a pin that swivels back and forth. And of course I don't get enough range of motion unless I take the uh, this reel table off. So I guess I got to do that too anyway, so let me just get it done. Okay, now we should be able to remove this. Yes, and you can see right here where the crack is. It's just right there. So fun. So I'm just going to use the table to push it back through. I'm 
reassemble the idler this away. Need my pen tip again. And this time we'll use the table as a uh, a stop against that shaft pushing out like so. Oh, that's actually promising the way that feels. The spring isn't quite seated properly yet. It is now though. So we might have re just restored this to a proper operation. You've got a little friction sheet there too on the uh, transport side we got to worry about. It's that big white circle you you kind of see. So let me see. Ooh, look at the back tension brake there. Look at that. No wonder that was riding with so much uh, extra torque. This is felt as well. It needs to be cleaned off. And the way you adjust the back tension torque on this thing is to um, move this spring over different notches. But uh, I'm somewhat optimistic I won't have to do that. We'll just have to see what happens once the uh, the deck is back together and we get the torque tape back in it. Let's see, what do I got to do back here? Well, I've got access. Probably be wise to re-lube the, uh, the area where the brake goes. This is also something I didn't do in the 61, so we might as well do this on camera. Okay, now I'm taking a look at the uh, actual brake assembly here. There is a little bit of lubrication we could do in there as well. Let me just clean things up first. And we should be ready to put the brakes back on. If we can remember how they go in. A little bit hard to line that screw up, but it, it'll it happen. And it did happen. That won't totally stay down in place till we get the uh, real motor back in, so how about let's do that now. So I don't have to fight with that later. And I've already decided on a course of action for the uh, the broken head bridge there, or head bridge holder, I guess you would say it is. I'm not sure if it'll work. I might be creating problems with myself down the road and just kind of kicking the can down the road, but this is only the 55. I don't want to go too crazy over it. This is probably going to spend most of its time on the shelf looking pretty for me. If I can get it functional, that's fine. It's when I get to the 65 and 75 I'll want to put in a little more effort. And by the way, I'm going to uh, recap this entire motor board as well. Okay, so brakes are done. Let's go back to the front. And I gotta finish up with this reel table. Okay, I got everything back together up in the reel drive area. I still don't think I'm gonna get off so lucky as to have the uh, 
fast wind idler work properly now in that clutch, but uh, we'll see. Now it's time to deal with this head block situation here. And in order to do this, what I'm gonna have to do is remove the pinch roller first. I do want to clean that anyway. It does seem to be like it's in good shape yet. So I don't think I'll change it or anything. I've got replacements for the pinch rollers, but I'm not really planning to do it unless I have to. Pinch roller is about to come off and we got to take note of where the spring is. Connects right there. You can kind of see it from this angle. So yeah, make note of that. I'm just gonna pull it right off. It just hooks onto uh, this little piece here. I'll put that off to the side for now, along with the uh, retaining washer. And we're gonna have to release a spring here, possibly more than one. Yeah, there's a black one here. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I need this to be a little more closer to me than it is now. Okay, yeah, so there's a black spring right around back here we have to release. And then there's this big silver spring up here we have to release, I do believe. So that's been released. Grease on the head block seems good, but uh, I'm willing to bet there's probably still issues here, just based on the fact it was having trouble engaging play. Now we have to get this big metal piece off, and the way you do that on this one appears to be uh, you push down this way and then force it back that way. So whatever you do with this... Uh, with this broken piece here, do not block the slot, otherwise you will not get this uh, this thing back together properly. Let's see if I can find a pair of pliers here. And we'll see if we can do this. Uh, maybe that doesn't work that way. There doesn't seem to be enough slack on the this other end to do that. So let me try doing it the opposite way. I'm not sure any way actually works properly to do this. This was a lot easier on the TCK45, I'll tell you what. So I'm just going to put my thumb over this and hope to God I don't break something here. And we're just going to have to pry this spring out, it looks like. I cannot see any other way to do this. like so. And be warned that there are ball bearings in there. You can kind of see the track from one right there, so don't lose your ball bearings. Probably getting grease all over my uh, heads here, but that's fine. And we've got the back tension brake and the, uh, well, something else there. I don't know exactly what it is that's holding this thing up from coming out entirely. Oh, wait, that's just the, uh, the clutch assembly back there. So I should have gotten that out of the way first. Can I still do that? Will I lose my ball bearing? Ok, 
Okay, there's the ball bearing right there. Down there. I'll just pick that up first and put that with the uh, head bridge, or whatever you call it, the spring that I took off. And now I should be able to get underneath to uh, remove that clutch, which is going to be difficult because I haven't literally done anything to, back here with the uh, mechanism. And you pretty much have to disassemble this whole thing in order to get to that clutch. Well, I guess we'll do that now then. All right, while we're here, let's take a look at this clutch. We'll see how good it is. Doesn't feel like there's a lot of magnetic strength there, but of course there doesn't really have to be. The main thing we want to do is make sure it's running freely, and it is. The problem I had with the 61 is uh, this shaft in here was not lubricated anymore. So it's good practice while you're into one of these Sony units to uh, get a little drop of oil in there. So I'm going to do that now. And just get it in there. So it's freewheeling pretty good. I'm happy with this. The 61 was completely locked up here. That's why it was giving me so much trouble. And of course I didn't realize that until I completely broke the clutch, so I'm not even going to get into this clutch unless I have to. I'm just going to put the clutch up out of the way, and then we'll get back to this uh, headlock assembly. and trying to deal with it. We should be able to pull it off now. Of course it's easier when the reel tables aren't in the way. Of course it's possible when the reel tables aren't in the way, but I'm not pulling them off again. Or am I? I might have to now. Yeah, we've already screwed with the ball bearing, so I have to now. Terrific! I gotta deal with that teeny tiny little washer again. So I'm not fully used to doing this yet. Sue me. Okay, you can come off now, I think. Why aren't you coming off now? Oh, I see. We can't even do that until we take the entire back side of the unit apart. Because that's what I wanted to do today. Do it over two days, I said. It'll be much better this time, I said. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. All right, we'll try to do this on camera. So I can hopefully know where to put things back as I pull them off here. These washers really do suck. Oh great, and then there's a spring under there too. Which I probably won't figure out how to put back in anymore. Okay, I think how you put this spring in is there's a little pin that engages with it, if I can get it to uh, do so. And then the sticky uppy portion of it goes along here. 
fairly sure that's how that goes. But I'll find out the hard way later. I just have to get all this stuff apart so I can deal with the mess I created trying to get the head block off. See, yeah, this is what's holding the head block in right now, is this sliding piece. So I should be able to get that off now, finally. Like so. We'll see if it's ready to come now. Head block is off. And I got a missing spring now because that went flying. Where did it go flying to? God only knows. There it is. Remind me not to do this on the next couple of, of units if I don't have to. All right, ball bearing, come on out. Go with your little buddies. Okay, so I got a total of four ball bearings out. There's one that goes here, if you can see that, and one that goes here, and one that goes here. So now I can address this uh, broken piece here, I hope. And I think what I'm gonna end up doing, if you guys can see this on camera, is I'm going to scuff up the plastic all along here I'm going to scuff up the plastic in here as well. And I'm going to sort of try the is the sarcophagus trick from the uh, NAC 480. I'm just going to fill this area right in here full of epoxy. And I'm going to go along here. And I'm going to try to find a piece of plastic I can use to reinforce this. And I should possibly think about doing this over here as well. But now that we know that we don't actually have to slide anything back out, out of this uh, slot here, I can possibly put a one big piece of uh, plastic across here and have that hold it. I'm not exactly sure, but I think that will work. But uh, before we get to doing that, I want to clean up this whole head block assembly on camera with you. Because I did not do that in the TCK-61. I wasn't quite experienced enough to uh, feel I was comfortable doing that, so... Just clean up all the old grease here. We'll go in with new grease when the head block goes back on. Of course, we got to do it from this side, too. There are no extra sliding plates on here. That's good. I'm learning. I'm not learning enough, but I'm learning. I'm just going to set that way off to the side here so it's out of the way of any harm. All right, are we ready for happy fun Dremel time? Probably, probably not, actually. But I gotta get this epoxy stuff done before the end of the day so I can quit and come back tomorrow or whenever to finish the rest of this. It's a little bit much to do this all in one day. Rushing things is when you make mistakes. Okay, folks, I think I got something set up here to uh, hopefully do this. I got this piece of plastic here, which came from an old uh, CPU heatsink bracket for a computer. I thought it might work. I don't know if it'll work. I, I did manage to scuff it up, so I hope it'll hold, but... Uh, I've decided not to go ahead and do the epoxy on it. 
I'm going to try super glue instead, and that's based on some advice I got from a previous repair. So let me break the seal on this. And we're just going to coat this in super glue. And we're just going to stick it on here. And then I'm going to clamp it in place using an alligator clip. Don't know if that will work, but it might. And while that's on there, I'm just going to put way too much on and have to clean it off. Basically trying to fill those gaps on either side of the uh, broken piece here. And with any luck, maybe this will do the trick. So if I can find another alligator clip, I'll put another one on there too, but uh, I don't think I'll be able to find one. Maybe I will. Ah, found another one. Maybe that'll work, maybe it won't. I'm just going to leave it like this for about 10 minutes or so and we'll see where we get. If it doesn't work, then we can always try the epoxy later. But uh, I thought maybe I would give this a try first and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so this has been setting up for at least 10 minutes now. So let's find out and see how well we did with this. I have some doubts, but actually not that many. So we'll take these uh, alligator clips off and we'll just have a look. Oh yeah, that's really solid. That is not moving anywhere. That's going to hold, I think. So I think we might have successfully repaired that. It's sticking up a little bit. Well, actually, it's pretty even with the uh, bottom plate. But uh, I was going to say, it doesn't really matter if it sticks out a little bit down here. Because uh, there actually is a, a space in the uh, transport or in the uh, deck itself that would allow this to sit. So I'm not that worried about that. So yeah, this seems to be successfully repaired. It's still a little tacky in places because I uh, coated the top side with super glue as well. But uh, I think that's going to hold. So the only thing to do right now is for me to put this top side back together and start in on the, the uh, bottom here. And there's really not too much to, to talk about down under here. So, uh, yeah, I don't know when I'll see you again. Maybe I'll do some of this stuff on camera. Maybe I won't. Most likely I won't. A lot of this seems pretty well lubricated yet. But... Uh, yeah, maybe I'll lube these wheels up and whatnot. And, but yeah, there's basically not much to do on camera with you guys until uh, until it's all back together and we get ready for testing. Because uh, the basic belt service, that's all covered in the TCK61 video. So you can go check that video out if you want to know about that stuff. But yeah, it's possible I will be back in here to, to uh, change this clutch out with the one from the 61. But... Uh, that will be done entirely off camera. I just wanted to show you what I was trying there in the meantime. So let me put this back together and we'll pick up again. Okay, so it's now day two and uh, my brain helpfully decided to join me today and uh, tell me exactly what the actual problem was with this uh, fast wind idler. It's never been the felt. It's always been that cracked piece underneath here. So the right way to fix this would be to take it all apart again, extract the shaft, and then probably use some super glue to uh, reinstall the shaft and hold it in. But I am not going to do that today. Reason being, I'm feeling sick and, uh, well, I just don't feel like doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to fix it from behind by putting a, a drop of super glue on the back side where the shaft is and hopefully holding it in that way. I could swap in the uh, good idler from the uh, 
TCK61, but then what happens if I need it, if I end up needing that idler for the 75 or 65? Then I don't have it anymore. No, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it as is. This idler is currently functioning, believe it or not. I can release the brakes and it will go over and it will spin just fine. But uh, yeah, eventually this is going to work its way loose again and I'll have to fix it properly. But uh, not feeling well today, so I'm not going to do that today. Instead, I'm just going to put this all back together and uh, finish the job, I think. But uh, yeah, this idler is doing fine now. This idler is working for now. And I also wanted to mention this uh, head block assembly tends to stick a little bit. So I'm hoping it's good. I had it working a lot better than this yesterday, but uh, I'm going to run it through its paces a few times. But uh, you really have to make sure everything underneath this uh, metal plate here is lubricated. Because I had to go in after the fact and inject some uh, grease in there using a syringe. Now, I would like to thank Trevor's Bench for giving me that idea. Anyhow, in order to get this uh, this metal piece back in, you have to bend this tab out of the way. I don't see any other way to do it very easily. And uh, just to caution you, you don't want to do that too often because this... Uh, if you bend this too often, it's going to break off, and then you can't get this back together again, ever. So, uh, yeah, be careful with that. So, uh, uh, let me just test this on camera with you guys. I gotta actuate the actual mechanism here in order to do so properly. So we're gonna do this from behind. I'm going to release the trigger and I'm going to see if, uh, it's already sticking up again. Great. Why is it doing this? Everything under there is lubed. It just seems like it's binding or something somewhere. I don't know exactly where because everything is lubed, literally. I can't think of anything that could be causing this anymore, and I do not want to bend this tab to take that metal thing back off, because I've already had to do it twice. If I do it again, I'm in trouble. Anyway, yeah, I'll figure that out. I'll tell you what the, the actual issue is, if I can ever find it, but... Uh, yeah, it's just sticking up. And it shouldn't be. I will say also that my repair back here is holding. I don't have any issues with this. It should hold up over time, long term, so that's all good. I just have to figure out why the head block is sticking again when I had it working perfectly last night. Well, folks, I have been over this and over this and over this again, and I cannot find the problem. It's just eluding me somehow. As you can see, it's stuck in the up position yet again. And I can't figure out why it's getting stuck like that. I can actuate this just fine for 50 tries. And then the, on the 51st try, it'll stick again. And then on the 52nd try, it'll stick again. That's how it keeps going with this thing. And I can't figure out why it keeps doing this. So uh, if I press down on this, it releases every time. And I can't figure out exactly why doing that releases it. There's no reason it should release anything. There's nothing holding it. There's this piece here, yes, but this goes to an arm that's on the underside of the transport, and that is completely free. See, I can move it back and forth now. It's stuck in the up position again, and uh, moving this arm does not release it. So what's going on here? I have no idea. There is no possible explanation I can find for this. All right, folks, I solved the problem. At least I think I did. This is not the way I would have preferred to do this, but it's the only way I thought was uh, able to save this transport at this point. Basically what I did was I increased the spring tension here. This is the return spring for the head block. As you can see, I've got like three or four loops 
in there now that's uh, over top of the uh, thingamadoodle and uh, it's no longer getting stuck at all. So uh, yeah, I would have preferred to have done this a little bit different and kept that spring the way it was, but uh, it just wasn't returning on its own with the uh, spring the way it was before. So hopefully this holds up. If it doesn't, I'm not sure I care at this point, but uh, yeah, it was either this or take the entire transport out of the uh, TCK61 to swap in and uh, that's even more of a mess I didn't want to get into because it takes a lot to get the transport out of a 61. So uh, I'm going to put it together like this. I'm going to have to reinstall this because I took it out because I thought I was definitely going to be doing the uh, 61 transport swap over, but uh, that'll go back in. And uh, yeah, at this point, I'm ready to put this back together and see if it works. And I probably will not be using the torque cassette to, to check the uh, back tension on that anymore because uh, this has been way too frustrating at this point. I just wanted to play. That's all I wanted to do is play. When we get around to doing the 75, I'll have to use the torque cassette both times, but uh, hopefully it won't fight me as much as this one has. So yeah, let me get this back together and we'll see what we got. Okay, folks, it's back together. Just a few more comments before I throw this in the machine and we can test it. I did end up replacing the pinch roller. This is a brand new 13 by eight by two millimeter roller. It's a fairly standard size. I have a couple of them. I figured, why not save myself a little time after all that fighting with the head block and uh, just go ahead and do it. So I did it. And uh, just wanted to mention real quick, this hinge was a little problematic. It was all gummed up with old grease, so what I did was I uh, sort of uh, worked a little gap in there and I dribbled some uh, isopropyl alcohol to clean it out, and then I went in with some new molly coat. I used the syringe to inject it in there, so that's good now. Anyhow, there was some further issues with this spring down here for the head block. It was kind of twanging against the uh, decorative plate there, so I forced it down a little further. That should solve that problem. And uh, around the back here, I decided to go ahead and do a new deck tech belt for the capstan. I left the one in there for the clutch that was in there because it wasn't bad. But uh, this is the belt I used. I figured, what the hey, I'll just throw it in there. The deck tech belt I used was slightly looser than uh, I would have otherwise expected from uh, the cross reference of the belts on this thing, but it works. I have a five millimeter belt that's two millimeters or something like that diameter smaller than this one. And that one would have almost worked, but it kind of tends to ride towards the front of the pulley on the motor. So I decided not to bother with that one. And yeah, I used the four millimeter one instead that I just showed you. And uh, yeah, all of the capacitors have been done in the motor board. I have not opened up the motor to uh, service the bearing back here. I thought about it, but um, that seems like something I would rather do on the 75 instead of the 55 and 65. It's really not that bad on this machine, so... Yeah, and I did go ahead and uh, throw some uh, super glue on the back of that uh, shaft back there to hopefully keep it holding steady. I don't know if it will. It'll probably work its way loose again, but... Uh, yeah, that's it for that. I just gotta find my 6 volt lamps and I'll replace this the same way I did on the uh, 61. You can refer back to that video if you want to see how I did that. And then yeah, it's ready to go back together now. Okay, so I got this back together well enough to do a quick little functionality check before I completely button things back up again. I haven't done the lamp yet. I'll do that in a minute here, but just powering it up. No capstan motor. What the heck? Okay, never mind, the capstan motor is running. Must have had it turned on and then turned it off or something. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Good torque on that now. Uh, 
Ah, uh, the real drive is still doing that. I was hoping that was fixed. Apparently it is not. I'm going to have to take the transport back off and I'm just going to go ahead and replace that with the one in the 61. That's all there is to it. I have just had about enough with this thing. I do have some uh, hollow core punches coming that I could use to replace the felt on there, but it's probably not the felt. It's probably the cracked plastic in back. So just in case you were wondering, the back side of the 61 idler is just as cracked as the one that came out of this thing so I don't know we're gonna try it and see what happens I'm gonna wait until after to put this back together because I got a feeling I got more to do on this but we're gonna just see here not even an attempt so this idler worked inside the 61, so the problem must be the clutch inside the motor. At least that's all I can think. See what happens here. I am about done with this tape deck, I gotta tell ya. I bet you'd love to know exactly how I fixed that. Well, I wouldn't call it fixed exactly. It's kind of slow engaging but it does engage now. By the way, that's the original idler. And uh, I just wanted to show you here. First of all, this spring is now inverted. Second of all, there is now a, a little M2 washer in between the uh, spring and this top washer. And third, I got rid of this thing. This is the original anti-friction washer that used to be in there. And instead I've gone in with molly coat, so the whole idler assembly is now molly coated. So I think I got this working well enough to put back together, finally. I haven't done the lamp yet. As you can see here, that one's dead. Not coming back to life, but uh, I'll do that off camera. I think I'm just about at the end. I sure hope I am anyway. Well, guys, I think we're about at the end here, or close to the end. I'm just going to calibrate the speed here real quick of this machine, and uh, we'll see what she does. Everything seems to be working now, even the light in there. I did it a little bit differently, as it turns out, than I did in the 61. I'll just show you. I've got some little tubing now I use for insulation, and I insulated the two leads of the lamp, and it's... Uh, zip tied to the uh, real drive motor harness to keep it out of trouble. So uh, let me get you in on the laptop here so you can see what it's doing. And I will put in the Denim DRM3 three, 3 kilohertz tape for this. And we'll just line this up real quick. So 3060, let me tweak that down. You can see me do it in real time. All right, I'm gonna call it right there. Wow and Flutter is acceptable, especially for the age of the machine and some of the problems we encountered in this, but uh, 
I'm not expecting perfection. Rewind is a little slow, so maybe my little modifications to the spring in there need to be undone. It's kind of struggling a bit. I mean, it's still working, but it could be better. Anyhow, I'm not too worried about that. This deck is going to be playback only. So, next step is for me to finish putting this back together and then we'll listen to it, I think. All right, I think she's ready to go. As you can see, I got the uh, side panels from the TCK61 on here. I do plan on making new side panels, but uh, that's not here yet, that little experiment. So let's see what she sounds like now. She sounded okay before. Sounds fantastic, I gotta tell ya. She's now going into rewind immediately. A little bit of a delay yet on fast forward. Well, folks, there it is, as best as I could get her. I gotta do this two more times, wonderful. I can't wait. But uh, yeah, I'm calling it a day on this one. It's working well enough. Like I said, it's for playback only. I will never use this to record. It's just part of my collection, is all. The light in the cassette well is a little dim, but it is working now, at least. And yeah, I can't wait to get new be new side panels on these uh, old Sonys, but uh, yeah, I'm not so sure how the 65 and 75 are going to go from here. Like, both of those units are extremely rough, so uh, we'll just have to see what I can do with them when I get there and as the time goes by. But uh, as for now, I'm going to call this one a day, put this one back on the shelf, and go have a Coke or something. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Take care.